should Spotify pay a higher percentage of its revenues out? So I said at the start, they only pay 65% and obviously they keep the 35% back to you know, keep the business afloat and keep it going and growing. Whereas you've got sites like Bandcamp that pay 90% of the, of the money out. So should Spotify increase this to more like 70 or 80% or higher? And this is what we get 60? 65%. 65? Yeah. This is when we get into the debate about where people get angry when they invest $100 million into the Joe Rogan podcast deal because obviously they're keeping back the money to make these deals. So, but obviously that's obviously in their best interest though to, you know, to grow and expand. So it's, so on one side, should they increase revenue? On the other side, they've got to run their business. And think about it. That's also showing you the value of your content. It does that so much so for creators in terms of podcasting, but it even gives you an idea, even with the music, the value of your content. No, there's no single artist that has been paid a $100 million deal. I get it. But if you look at it, 60%, right, or 65%, if someone says, hey, you know, we'll, we'll give you 65% of the deal, that doesn't sound that bad, right? It's not that violating. Yeah. yeah. But when it gets cut through all these other pieces, then you end up with what you end up with, all right? So, exactly. like, so, you know, in some senses, I'm sure the licensing deal that these labels have are a little Joe Rogan-ish, all right? We just never think about what are the labels getting in, in, in mass and, and as a whole, because Joe Rogan's deal is a, is a, to some extent, not fully right. But it, it's a, it's a licensing deal. I'll say that it is a licensing deal. I was gonna say yeah. music licensing deal, but, but, but because it's a licensing deal, it does have some similarities. And so when you consider that part, all right, what does it really look like? Okay. You're, you're popping like this and you, I think it's three years right? A hundred million for the licensing and you still own it. That's the biggest difference between Joe Rogan, right? And the artist, <laughs> right? Yeah. He still yeah. owns it. He, so he can have control of it, license it. And then at the end of the day, if he wants to, to pop and, and keep moving, he can, he can do that. But just the fact that he's the one in control of the creative to a fuller extent changes the game versus an artist who signed, to this whole system where really the system is speaking for you. And then the other situation is an artist who might own all their stuff, but the, the leaders of your industry as a whole are still running through that same middleman, which is the labels. It, it's meaningful yep. when the leader, right? Cause the leader sets the tone and Joe Rogan, if Joe Rogan was signed to some other type of entity and, and, and kind of ran through a, a record label ish type system himself, then that also would have diluted and set a lower bar for how the other content creators. But since he wasn't on that, now you, you get to see a fuller vision and version of what that's worth. Exactly. This kind of, this is why I want to talk about this topic really, because the, obviously the debate is sort of feels like is the people versus Spotify, but I'm not trying to defend Spotify here, but I'm trying to be like objective, but it's not all their fault. Everyone's got, you know, everyone's got a part to play and, and they're not in, they're not in control. They're not the gatekeepers. The labels keep, Spotify afloat. They're not in control in this situation. Therefore, it's not just them who should be getting attacked. And that's what we're trying to do in this sort of discussion right now is try and highlight that. And it's the same when you talk about the Joe Rogan deal, we know he's in control. Spotify are in his hands. He can pull, he can pull out when he likes. They've got no control over what he talks about. They're obviously here to facilitate and move him to the next level in terms of audience reach, which is why the labels are on Spotify yeah. because they know they can get a lot of value from it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And which is why Spotify it's like f this music stuff i want to go into this podcasting thing because joe rogan's setting the tone and he's legitimizing the platform even more so for podcasts but everybody's deal doesn't look like his and i'm not talking about payout i'm talking about ownership they they bought the ringer i believe as a whole uh, which is i don't know if you know that podcast but uh this dude bill spence simmons very credible and, and and dope podcast and they're buying a lot of this other stuff outright yeah. where they're, they're they're owning so it's cool okay yeah we, we the worth of that like the trickle down effect of even just licensing and having that exclusively even if we don't own it to trickle down to this other stuff that we actually own it is it, it's, it's you know five billion dollars worth right how much the stock went up <laughs> yeah exactly right? like that's 
it's it's a it's a beautiful thing for them as a company and that puts them in a position where now you don't have this variable cost of whatever the licensing and what am i paying this month you have a fixed cost because i own it and whatever costs to run this shit and any profit on top of that whatever that looks like which i'm more interested in digging more into what that is do they is it just the sponsorships that they're taking from or or what but whatever the the profit is you know margins only grow right with the cost being fixed yeah so and obviously the, the funny thing is as well that a couple of years ago joe rogan was asked about why is the podcast not on spotify and he's like you know at the time he was like we don't need to be like, i don't care about spotify and now here we are and he's signed a deal it just shows you how the you know the money talks and the business side of things like it wasn't in his best uh, interest back then to be on spotify he didn't need to be but now he's got the capital behind him. He's like, okay, I'll, I'll consider you now as an option. He was on Apple before. I, I, I think he was. I think he was an independent. He obviously had a good relationship with Apple. He was one of the top podcasts oh, on Apple. But he, but he was just man. asked a couple years ago, why are you not on there? And he was like, it's not relevant for us right now. I didn't real. I didn't realize that he wasn't on it. Um, especially even like if he wasn't seriously on Apple, because that's even more so about your worth right mm-hmm. if he was on spotify already he wouldn't have been able to get the deal that he got exactly, particularly yeah. particularly yeah. not to that extent one you're already on there so you know um so you know I mean, we don't have to convince you to come over we don't necessarily have to talk exclusive mm-hmm. two we also are going to be valuing you less on the brand appreciation in that uh what's the word good it's good something what is based on brand. I can't remember what it's called. Goodwill, I believe. The, the goodwill of your brand, it's just based on the numbers because we already see what your numbers do on our platform, right? Yeah, exactly. Maybe there's that additional aspect of, okay, taking people from other platforms if we make it exclusive, but that, that changes the negotiation completely. So the fact that he wasn't on there and in a sense held out whether it was all strategic or not, there was a huge benefit to that deal and how it happened. I know people who are like that with TikTok because TikTok was trying to get people to come over, right? Just like so many of these platforms do these days. Yeah. And like, "Eh, nah, I don't want to get on yet because I want to go through their system versus just being on there and then they see how I operate. Let me get money to get onto the platform. So yeah, that's... uh, Wow, I did, I did not realize or think about the fact that he wasn't on um, on Spotify, but that part should be noted for anybody who probably thinks, let me go start a Spotify podcast and then get bought up by by Spotify, right? Or like, I, I think it's a little different. It's a little different. Because a lot of his viewership is actually on YouTube. That's where a lot of the views came from because the video format's on there. So he was still, on, on he was still, yeah, exactly. So he, that was his, he's in control of that. He obviously, he was on Apple, Apple Podcasts. He was, the number one downloaded podcast last year above New York Times Daily, but he wasn't actually with Apple like exclusively. Mm-hmm. So it just it. it just shows you that. And now, and obviously, he, at the time, he didn't care about Spotify because he was doing well on his own. But now he's seen the potential. It's like, okay, I'm getting a lot of money here. I mean, it can take us even further now in terms of like our reach. Yeah, he obviously seen a long a long term strategy behind it now. But at the time, it wasn't really relevant to him. So and still owns it, man. Yeah. <sighs> sure there's bonus incentives attached to things and like all type of performance and back-end things that the deal i would not be surprised if the deal was at least 200 million plus after all money is is allocated but i don't you know i don't know it should certainly shake up the industry now in the in the podcasting because obviously it's having it's like it's just like a very big like watershed moment for like you know new big deals being signed yeah, I'm the because we already saw the trend start where podcasts just started to pop up more and more out of nowhere. Anyway, it became mm-hmm. a popping thing again. So, I mean, you add on the fact that there's money in the game, people are thinking complete. Everybody who has a podcast are like, "Holy shit!" Like they weren't that weren't even thinking about that kind of thing. It just automatically. Just ch- change your perspective. I, I guarantee you, there's nobody who has a podcast, especially anybody who has a, a consistent audience, no matter what level that is. They're now like, yo, this is a business opportunity. It's, it's, like, mm-hmm. it, it, it's the same as uh, 
shoot anything that starts more that could be the niche, the love, like even sports, right? It was it, the culture in sports when people were making thirty thousand dollars a year or, or barely making more than anybody versus now you're making hundreds of millions, right? And now yeah. it, it it goes from I have my my godfather was like ah, he could have went to the league or he um but his mom was sick so he rather just get a job closer to home right so he can take care of his mom you try, you, you try take that till today i need to go to the league so i can take care of my mom exactly. right yeah yeah <laughs> like he's like it's, it's a different level of money and people are farming their kids to go to go to the league and now i think people will be farming maybe not necessarily training their kids for a podcast although <laughs> there are people doing that with their kids and um, in terms of influencers and take so yeah yeah there'll be people a lot more strategically like saying oh no we're not just having fun conversations it's uh, we can get some money we might not get a hundred mil but we can get a mil we can get four hundred thousand there's it's going to be interesting i mean i think content as a whole though people i don't think artists felt it as much as they should but that was a big win for content as a whole for anybody who notices and pays attention to the fact that that showed a sense of value all right like drake should be looking at that all right uh, like everybody should be looking at that and start realizing oh shit my content is just like beyonce was uh with the uh coachella and she sold yep, that to yep. Netflix. Like all those things are like, okay, hold up. No, this content is worth some money. Like, oh, I can't just, just, I just perform at Coachella and take the the performance fee. I can get less on the front end. It's like anything else. And then resell this on the back end for $50 million more than they would have paid me just to perform. And it's something I'm already yep. doing. Wait, what? You know, that, the, the content, the way we think about content has to change. Um, and it's not just a podcast thing. Ow.